Hallo, herzlich willkommen in Smart City Lab. Um, I will switch to English right from the start because we have an English speaking guest. Today, it's all about soccer. Okay. And as we know that soccer is a billion dollar game in these times, data must be somewhere, right? Yeah. And data might be already very important for sports decisions as for our daily life as well. I think we can all imagine where data is used in football, of course, in training methods, and transfer uh, questions, and so on. And I'm really, really um, excited to uh, learn more about the relevance of data in software. It's not a coincidence that we made this uh, event today, because as you might know, there is a soccer game after this um, conversation we will have. And I heard that maybe the Beamer will be used to show this game after that, right? Okay, we will see. But if anyone wants to watch this game, I don't know. Everyone is invited and there's a pizza place around the corner, so it's no public view, yeah? It's an uh, academic uh, course, right? Thank you very much. So I welcome our guest, Adi Su. Today, yeah. he's an. I have to now. I have to read what uh, not uh, wrote down. You're a doctoral student at ETH Zurich and member of the Social Networks Labs. All right. Um, you have been the head teacher. Oh, sorry. I, I don't want to. Know. You you will tell us who you are. Yeah, yeah. I will. Mean, <laughs> the most the most interesting thing is of course that you won a great third place at the Paris Saint Germain. Sports Analytics Challenge. Yeah, I got promoted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I stop now. I hand uh, over to you. Thank you that you're with us and enjoy. <laughs> hey, hello everyone and good afternoon and welcome to my presentation. Today I want to talk about data, data analytics and football. That's very cool, so I think not time I but it's okay. Uh, I'm Hadi Sutude from the Social Network Lab at ETH. And to start, I will just have a brief introduction. I'm a doctoral student at ETH and working on issues central the network analysis of formation characteristics in association football with soccer. So, this is a title of my PhD project. And the last spring, I was the head teaching assistant for the soccer analytics course that ETH offered for the first time. So, we had around 300 students in the selected course. Taking the course to apply data science, data analysis methods on data from all as part of the studies. And before starting my PhD study here at ETH, I was the football defense consultant for the performance department of the Royal Football Association. And yeah, the picture clearly shows it has something to do with Paris Saint Germain. So in 2019, I was there as part of the Sport Analytics Challenge to give my presentation and won the third place in the third so All in all, I have some experience in this field. Uh, probably what I said can be reliable. Uh, I have divided the presentation today into three parts. So first, I will just go through the different data sets that you can imagine of in the football industry. Then to the applications that you can build based on those data sets. And uh, finally, it's just the challenges that you can face. I think you can get some suggestions for any data science projects that you want to have in the activity lab, the data sets, application and challenges. So starting with the Data sets. I think it's interesting and important to mention Charles Reed, uh, who is uh, who was a British person and a pioneer in this field. So back in those days, that didn't have like uh, databases or information. What he was doing, he was attending football matches in the UK, having a pen and paper and collecting data by just observation, like looking how many passes are in a sequence and just counting them writing them down and then using the information that he was collecting himself, make some, uh, let's say, analysis and make some conclusions. But nowadays you are very lucky that because of the digital era that we are living in, a lot of information are available and collected over time 
and you can just make use of them. In this part, I just go to each data set that we have in before, explain it and how it's collected. And then later on, you can see what the application can be. First one is the reading footage. I think it's obvious, the most obvious data set that one can assume is simple, but probably it's so obvious that we just neglect it. But a lot of teams have people who are responsible for recording their training session, or if they have a contract with a broadcaster, they just get the video footage from them. And that's, a, I think, a very important asset for any simple team to store them properly somewhere that they can access maybe for the last five matches or 10 matches if they are looking for anything. This is the first one. Second data set by so it's called event data. And basically you can assume all the all actions that happen on the ball. As we go across shots. This information and all the attributes related to that information, like which player is taking that action, where, what's the outcome of that action, is recorded over a match. We have like around 2,000 actions per match. And if you can just assume about it, have taken the, the, the visual information that it gives you, you see, you know the player who's taking a specific action on the ball, and you know the outcome, but basically you don't know anything about everyone else on the pitch. So it gives you partial information about that moment. And it's easy to write questions, like you, you say, give me all the finals that passes by specific players. Just when you have to take <laughs> answer this type of question by count them, how many of them have been or what percentage was successful or not. But as I said, you don't really have the context. So here you know when the player passed the ball, for example, to a specific location, but you, didn't, you don't know how many other passes he had the option to play, but you don't have that information here. Or you don't know whether this pass was under pressure or not, but you don't know in any version of the other players. So that's why there are attempts to enrich the data set, the events data, because we have the team footage. And at the moment, that there are some people who are collecting with each player is taking what action on the ball, so it's an automated what is manual process. So when the action is taken on the ball, they just uh, stop and then they also collect the location of all other players who are visible from the team footage. And that's called uh, like 360 data. Uh, that's the name that here we have the data provider. So there are some companies who collect this data and send it as the product. And this is like enhanced given data with more information. Just to give you a better feeling of how this data is collected, uh, I just played a short video clip of how FIFA is collecting this data for the current World Cup. Just get the get here over here. We have a team of 25 analysts working on each game. So we have one analyst building one player for the entire period of the game. So what that allows us to do is go into real great detail around what that player is doing. Typically, a football data set only looks at all the actions around the ball. What we actually are able to do here is look at all the actions off the ball and around the ball as well. An average football data set is somewhere around two to two and a half thousand events per game. We collect an excess of 15,000 data points. So I think we definitely have the ability to answer some new footballing questions, create some new insights and new intelligence about the game. We have the FIFA football language, and that is the foundation of what our analyst team are doing here. So one analyst watches that one player, and all they're looking to do is look for the actions that that player may do. And like I've said, it's not always with the ball. It could be movements or offers to receive, for example. And they use the definitions in the FIFA football language to then code the events that that player is performing. Making decisions, making the right ones. I had a good instinct, but I needed to back that up. Analysis data helps me to back that good instinct up, whether that's an individual player, whether that's a unit, or whether that's a team. It helps, gives me information to make better decisions. Better decisions makes me a better manager and makes the players better in all something. Ultimately, that's the vision of FIFA, making World Cups more competitive. 
if we can give information, and that's what we're doing at the moment to the small nation, and helping them develop their countries to to close the gap. That's what people want. That's their vision. I think there, there are some specific points here. So, both of us are, they have 25 people per match. Person is just for one player and all the actions. Let's have the question that can answer. Uh, so they have one person responsible for one uh, player, all the action that takes on the ball, or maybe action that takes off the ball, like raise uh, raises his hands that he's available to see pass or not. But that's also what other data providers do, the companies who are providing, collecting data and selling it as their product. They have some people watching full matches and collecting data. It's not in pen and paper, but they are using some tools help them facilitate the process so they, they press on the button in their pass or with the like cross data is collected but it's interesting like when they want to look uh, collect the location of where the action has happened that's the tip location where here it's like a player who is just running forward they, they take this point in this piece of location and in their mind, map it to the location that they think it is on the background in the that they see the pictures in the background. And they click on it, and the coordinate is reported to the system. So you can maybe question a bit of the accuracy of what they do here. Uh, and that's why uh, they have a quality assurance process. So they cannot have 25 people like FIFA, that's just affordable for them. They have like three people. Uh, as an example here, one person is responsible for collecting data for one team, another one is responsible for the other team, and the third person, the observer, is there to make sure that they don't make any mistakes to collect them. But usually after the match is over, they also go to the data again and just fix the issue the errors that they find. So this is, I think, the event data and the outcome, the, how the companies provide that uh, product to the in football teams or uh, use the uh, outlets that they want to make use of this data coming through like an external file or API or JSON so, and for maps and this responsibility of the person working in a football uh, club to just process this data and make it So this is we have the big footage, we have the given data and now we go to the third data set or data type which is optical tracking data. So here uh, we see the camera and these cameras are installed around the stadium, and depending on the data provider, who maybe they can track all the players on the field only with one camera or they can have two cameras. But what these cameras do, they track the X, Y, Z coordinate of the ball during the match, also X, Y, Z coordinate of the players. And it really depends on the there is like 10 frames per second that the camera that they are using like around 1.2 million uh, data points for the like three frames per second data points. To just give you a feeling how it looks like, so you have to get the actual footage, and here is just the what you get out of the tracking uh, out of the optical tracking data. The outcome, it can again be like an API or external file. I just have a process uh, table. So you have player ID, you know, for each team that player is, and the coordinates of the player, and also the coordinates of the ball. Uh, what you get as an outcome. Then we go to the another type of data. So I will just go through all the different data sets. So and then we later on go to the application. So another one is the GT tracking data. Probably you have seen players wear some, uh, they wear they, it uh, below their shirt and they, they basically they in the pocket. The fact that they took the GPS device here and this GPS device tracks the players. And also, depending on the device, it can uh, provide more information like the heartbeat, uh, acceleration, or you know, Point is that you have this information only for your own players. You don't have it for the offline teams. It's still a partial picture of what's happening. And it has more applications for medical team 
club and also a typical load monitoring. So how many there's a player runs and different states they have, but you can also get this information from the full tracking data and the accuracy. Another data type is basically what we can get from a TV footage. So there are companies based on only what you see from TV footage, they take the players and match them to exactly the coordinates that players have. The same what we see is that we only have the information of the players are visible on the TV footage and we don't have any information about the, everyone else. And just to give us get a feeling how it starts with detecting the objects, players detecting the ball, tracking them over the multiple or multiple frames that the same player is, which player in previous frame is the next one, where is the next one, and having their end. But I think as you can imagine, it can be very difficult depending on the weather situation or the angle of the camera and the stadium. So it can be challenging, but it's also important to always be critical with the data that you get and double check the quality of that because you can be just don't rely on what the data provider tells you about the accuracy and quality of the data, but also. There are people who work for clubs and their job title is performance analysis and video analysis and what they do. Usually, is they are responsible for recording the match, so they have the they don't rely on the but they get maybe from the broadcast because they they have they use their own camera, they put it uh, that in an angle that can have, have all the players in the footage. And also, they usually sit with a laptop and they collect some information that are not in the event data, so it's more advanced. So you can think about like concepts like contra attack, like pressing, so. It's not passes or dribbles that you have in the data. It's more, more complicated and it can be even more customized. But that's what these people are responsible to do for their team. And maybe for the offline team, it's, it's not really, uh, it depends on what they have in pass. And this is called coding data. Now you can think of a lot of other data sets, uh, just list them here. I don't want to go through all of them. But for the health uh, and medical part, but here is an example from kids going to open. So they have an app, all the players have it, and each morning they wake up and they just get the quest, answer the questions. How do they feel today? Do they, if they have a bit of sleep or not? Do they feel pain anywhere? And then it's an indicator when this information goes for the medical team that they need to maybe uh, come and uh, contact the player to just follow up the situation. Another data set uh, is like the ratings, or maybe what you even see in the FIFA video game. All these different KPIs, there is a number, so they are really not a random number. So there are some people who are responsible to monitor players over time, and it's not even one person, there's like a group, and then they take the average of the grades that uh, most of the people see and then put it here. Then you have the information from social media, transfer market, internal reporting clubs, and ratings. So in all these different data sets, before really building any application, it's important. If you want to do something properly in a club, you have a database, a single point of access, considering all the regulations, all the data sets, and synchronize them together so because all of them give you a partial information. You have event data, is telling one part of the story, you have tracking data. And if they are really synchronized together, then you can uh, start building all the applications and scale. So now we go to the applications. I don't know whether you have seen during this workshop, there are more graphics shown, uh, and this is what the FIFA is doing based on the data that they collect. They try to get engaged more with the fans through showing more data, more statistics than before. So that's that's one application fan engagement and what you see in the media. Another one is difficult load monitoring. So here is the official report that FIFA published for the first match to Interland had against Cameroon. And based on the tracking data, uh, it just shows which player so many meters he ran and looking for how many meters that player ran with different uh, speeds and also how many uh, sprints and how is the transfer. Yeah, so I think it's very difficult really to go through this table with all these numbers, but 
the person who is responsible maybe to go and look at this table probably is looking to see some strange numbers here. If the player is done, not running as is expected, or then, then you need to follow up with that player. So that's the official report that if they just put it, I think, like four hours after each match, they just put it on to the training center's website. Now the application is healthy. So uh, I don't know if you have seen this moving money ball uh, played, and here is a scene where he's sitting with some scouts. So scouts are people who work for the club and they are responsible for identifying targets in the transfer markets and players. And here is a quote uh, Brad Pitt says in that movie that there are big teams, there are rich teams, there are poor teams. Basically, depending on the budget we have, we need to make decisions. So we cannot make decisions like big teams have an unlimited budget. We need to find different ways to make decisions and find players. That's the main idea. And what the scouts do in those meetings and they, they sit and want to discuss players, they basically they need to have feeling this type of reports. So when they go to watch a match and a player, they have a form with the name of the player and then they have some metrics, they just give grades, it's just objective. The scout is the person who makes the decision. And there are some text box that they just like write about the abilities of players here and the weaknesses. And then these reports are based off the discussions in those meetings. And you can imagine it's not really scalable. So if you want to scout, I don't know, 10,000 players or start from a pool of 10,000 players and find talents, you cannot really send scouts to all of them. And the idea here is that if we can, based on the data that we have, the database, can have like a dashboard here and we can start with creating filters. Maybe the very uh, single ones like age, like the contract, probably the ones who have played the uh, video games are very familiar with all these uh, filters. So you can make a short list based on data, and also you can have more advanced KPIs to sort the players. And in stop playing to 10,000 players, you have a short list, and it's use that as the starting point for sending a scouts to look at the players that maybe live or look at the video. Another application is what happens really on the pitch. So the coaches, how they make decisions. And here is uh, how the week can look like for a coach. So here is from a workshop that Mourinho had in Portugal and it was on high performance football coaching. And he was saying that if they have a match on Monday and they have another match on Sunday, that's how the week looks like for them. How he defines or schedules the for his team. But I think there are some parts that are interesting. So on, on Thursday, for example, they have a meeting with the players. They just use the video to go through the opponent and just get some videos that are facing next Sunday. They have another meeting that they ask there to integrate their own team, what they need to do, and also the opponent. And also, other, there are other meetings with the players. So there are the coaches have meetings with the players to discuss what they need to do. And here I have one example, so you get a feeling, it's a short video clip how those meetings look like before the match with the players. And later on, we'll see what can be taken out of here. I feel that you are honestly a very nice group of guys. For 90 minutes, cannot be nice. We win tomorrow, Chelsea will win Man City, nine points, nine points. They come here in uh, December. We can we can make top four. I wouldn't come here if you were not as good as you are. No chance. I hit our two strikers, two three guys. I promise you that they are going to have a hard time. I promise you, you are better. You have mobility. You have speed. But the principle of the game is that they are going to give you a hard game. So I think the main takeaway message here is the tools that the coach is using to communicate. Maybe in the beginning we saw that there is a monitor that maybe they show some video clip and then there is a board and just draw something and just keep it simple because the audience that he is talking to are players and players, yeah. 
basically to understand what you know but it's not really about showing charts or complicated stuff but simple and they can understand videos so it's, I think that that's the most important part and let's see what data can do so coaches have the support team performance and video analysis and they delegate a lot of tasks to the support team so in a meeting they need to show video and for example the coach says support team look for the last five matches the opponent had cut all the moments that have this situation on the pitch and going to one clip and leave the meal to show the next meeting to players and stuff so he if you don't have any automated way, then you need to start watching all those five matches and stuff to play, cut, and yeah, you need to repeat the next video. So, yeah. And they might have, they you know, really enjoy it. And the outcome is this type of also, so apart from the video clip, what these people need to do, they need to give reports, look for the strengths and the weaknesses of the opponent, and compile a report like this. And just hand it over maybe to the coach, and the coach also maybe take away some messages here and just complicate them. And so, watching video, you need to create clips and also having this type of. And this report is from 2006, I think, uh, that uh, the coaching, uh, the support team for Mourinho figured when he was in Chelsea, at Chelsea. And uh, the message, for example, or one message here is that they have identified two players from the opponent that they are ideal targets for high pressure. So, but if you don't say it was really only videos, watching videos and trying to infer some information like this and put it into the report or make video clips. And... But now, when we have the database and all these data sets, maybe we can do it more efficiently. Let's assume that the coach has asked us, uh, it's assuming we are performing from video analysis, to find all the moments that the central defenders are where 13 players that are not shot the last five matches. You can go to watch video clips, or if you have the tracking data, then you can uh, start just uh, finding the three lines of the team. And then look for the defense line and the moment that the distance between two players is more than 30 meters and just get everything out and then connect that or synchronize that with the video clip. And you have a pipeline each time the coach asks for the new team and just run it and just keep the video clips. So I think it's uh, what this uh, data part can help here is just automating the process and you can answer more questions and you can make most of your time. Uh, usually, what what was the question I uh, received is that whether these data sets can be used during the match. So you have to have a time break. After the data, maybe with the tracking data, the first half it comes, even then you can get something live and tell to the coach. In total, you can do that. But here I just have one clip from it's just the last week's match, so here you have it against Argentina. And how the atmosphere and the dressing room looks like. And then you can really see whether it's the right moment to try to show data and ask the coach to show video clips or not. So I just played this to get a feeling how it looks like. Yes. Okay, so just Mr. Salman, I compare the other one. Oh, oh, what time will you eat here? Oh, hey, 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 if you're fine, you can make a picture of his email if you want. You are in front of the device. You are in front of the device. Before you have good. The call has a good Did you see what you did? Something's the lando. 
مش في الشامبين هنا واحد سايكل شيء الوقت المناسب اللي تضغط فيه وتكسب ويو دونت فيل وي ار ايبل تو كم باك ما كان عندك احساس ان امريكا بنرجع نتعادل يو دونت فيل ات تيك بلاي ريلاكس قاعدين نلعب مرتاحين Come on, come on, come on, this is a worker. Rajal, come on, I'm a cast idol. Give everything, help the country. When you are at the edge of the road, you are like this. This time, Allah. Oh, you are the edge of the road. Make up the ground. Rest in peace, I'm going to send you to the corner. 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 So, all I'm saying is like this. Come on, come on. 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 That was here. I think this was one of the video clips that I could show here that you can YouTube you can search for how to make bugs and some coaches use the language as a same much we have to create here. So I to go with this one. I'll say it's more instant. So a lot of things are really about mental parts and one, two messages. And some coaches show some some clips make short map in minutes. And if you are fast enough in the half time to really get the tracking data and event data and are you like, you think out there those are like in that moment, the data we get and you can really calculate something. You should be fast enough to give to the coach and really the coach is the one who decides based on the situation what's the best. Uh, that touch. So when the match is over, usually coaches have post-match meeting again with the players to go over what happened in the match and if there was something wrong or right and just discuss it. Here we have another example that's basically used in video to communicate a message with the players. Just see this one from uh, something from the the game needs to come and it's under control. And now, Kellen walks away at the dangerous area. I blame him. I blame him. You have to communicate. You have to tell Darren to come back. I promise you, Darren. If I am there, I don't let Darren go. So I think here again, the importance of BQ is pretty important and all the data sets that you are collecting is a way search through the video find the right moments in a more efficient way and maybe we, we do some aggregated calculation and they can be framed in messages that the coach is going to communicate players maybe it's also a tactical board that they show the players how they should position but i, I just want to say that it's not really about showing specific visualizations to players because that you can understand more Close presentation. I just go through there's some challenges that we can maybe face. I think the first one is data quality is very important. Like any data science project. Here we have one situation, it's a free kick. And what this study has done in 2019, they have looked into different data providers where on the pitch that data providers says this free kick has happened. So we have data provider A, B, C, D, different colors, and they just put it on, on each. And you see that data provider A says the trick is happening. Data provider C says it's happening. And then they have also asked some people in a survey, where do they think that has happened? And then you have access. So it's important to question the data you get, and that's, I think, what makes this sense from different data providers, the quality of the data that The second challenge is that we have different data sets. Each of them is giving us an information about part of the information. And if you want to have a full picture, we need to put them all together. But merge event and tracking data. But it can be challenging because event data is collected per second and tracking data is collected per tens of seconds. Finding the right frame in tracking data to sequence the event data can be challenging. If you have you get it from two different data sets. Another challenge is adding context to the event data. Like I said, you know the play is passing, but whether it's back under pressure or not, what are the other options? We need to craft tracking data to be able to find. So writing queries for event data was easy because it just wrote 
are low, but for tracking data for one study, we have 22 k as I know of course. So we're dealing with 23 options. And it's not as easy as net data. And I think the last challenge I have here is creating new and useful metrics. For example, you see this situation here, and a coach has asked, for example, you to write something that can find all the similar situations like this from as I mentioned. And then you just play this uh, video clip. It's just a uh, very quick attack by the Belgian players uh, in the last World Cup against Japan. It's just a counter attack, but how you define a counter attack with numbers to be able to write something to extract all the similar or all counter attacks from other matches. I think it's very difficult and challenging. So data sets, applications, and challenges. And here I just want to show that uh, even in the industry, even clubs, uh, and uh, player agents, even in the companies who are working, they are moving towards at least the job system so that big data teams is very multiple directions. Conclusion, I think data sets, application challenges, but just three parts that I had in this presentation. And I hope it was entertaining at least. So maybe it's not really what you do uh, here as a scientist lab, or you are not going to do anything related to this part. But yeah, maybe it gives you some idea. Yes.